Now, one of the main reasons we even have a key vault in Azure is to manage things like keys, secrets, and certificates. So I want to show you a little bit about how to do that. Here we are on portal.azure.com. I'm going to click the menu button and I'm going to go to resource groups and we'll go to my key vault RG and I have a key vault in there called my key vault ELP1. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to double, I'm going to click on the keys blade. So as you can see, I have no keys. I can say to generate a key right here. All right, it gives me the option to generate. Um, I can generate based on HSM protected keys. That gets into using Microsoft's uh, HSM system. Costs a little bit more money to do that. And uh, you can also import from somewhere else. Okay, import from a file if you've got one on premise. That, that's called a customer managed key. And then you could also restore from backup if you want, if you had a backup. So I'm going to call this my key demo. That's going to be the name of it. And I'm going to go with. Um, with RSA. So you have RSA, which is Rivas Shamir and Edelman algorithm, the most common algorithm on the planet, or you've got the elliptic curve model for generating a key as well, which is um, also pretty popular. It's used in conjunction with what's called Diffie Hellman algorithm and all that. But RSA is the most common. You can also do the HSM backed up versions if you want, but again, more expensive to use hardware security module equipment. I'm going to go with 2048 bit encryption. You could also schedule, like set an activation date, set an expiration date if you want. Um, you can go ahead and enable it. You can apply tags. You can also do what's called a uh, key rotation, which will switch the key out, which I'm not really getting into right now. But I'm going to click to create, and I've now officially created myself a key. I can click on that key if I want, and there is the current version of the key. I can also click on that. If I wanted to download a, a copy of that public key, I can do that by clicking that button right there. Okay. Um, so let's go back over here and we'll click on secret. So secret is like a password or some kind of code you want it to remember. So I go here, I could create one manually. I could uh, build a secret from a certificate if I want. I'm going to give this my secret demo is going to be the name of it. And I'm just going to type a bunch of characters. And so that's my secret code right there. Um, give it a content type name if you want, optional, set a, a activation date, expiration date if you want specify a tag if you want go ahead and enable it and I've now officially created myself a secret all right so that's how that works um, you can see the information there I can say show the value if I want all right and then finally we have certificates so I could uh, generate a certificate if I want go right here and say generate you can also import one from somewhere so like if you've had a certificate applied from your own certificate authority or if you um, if you had one from a uh, maybe a third party certificate authority, you could do that. So I'm gonna say generate, I'm gonna call this my certificate. Okay, type of CA, this is a self-signed certificate or certificate issued by integrated CA or non-integrated CA. So integrated CA would be one that's integrated with Azure or one that's non. Uh, I'm gonna say self-signed. I'm gonna say CN equals exam lab practice.com, all right? My domain name, CN stands for common name. This is going to be the name of the certificate this is associated with. Now, you also, the other thing would be with DNS, we would need to make sure there's a DNS name associated with it here. So we'll say OK. Um, you can set a validity period, 12 months. It's a year. Most of the most certificates are valid for a year. Pretty common. And then you can choose the content type, whether it's going to be uh, the PKCS or PIM. Uh, this is the public key cryptography standards, all right? Um, and then you've got a uh, lifetime action type. Uh, by the way, PKCS number 12 is a pretty common standard for Microsoft environments. But lifetime action, automatically renew at a given percentage of lifetime, 80%. Or you can say automatically re renew at a given number of days or email the contacts during a percentage of lifetime or email all contacts in a given number of days. So it, just, it would send you an email saying, hey, I want you, do you want to renew your certificate? You can also do what's called an advanced policy, which I'm not getting into. It just advanced policy just lets you specify some extended key usages. You can look up these extended key usage codes. Uh, if you are doing something with a specific web server, that web server um, or web developer might require this uh, certificate to support a certain extended key usage and you'd have to look the code up for that and you could place that here. You can also customize some of the uh, other values that you want right here, key sizes and all that. All right, 
So then we'll click to create, and we've now created a certificate. All right, so there it is. I want to look at it. I can download a backup of the certificate if I want, and I uh, can even open that up if I want, view that. So um, that is the idea of stripping. So those are your three main things that your three main types of objects that a Azure Key Vault can generate. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. I wanted you to know that I'm trying really hard to build this channel, and it would help me out so much if you would take the time to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, and with that said, let's get back to the video.